why there's lots of elements to get ready. I've got 750 grams of potatoes in some water and they're just simmering because I want that as mash. And then I'm going to hard boil two eggs. So I put them into some simmering water and they need eight minutes to cook. So I'll put a timer on for those because I don't want to overcook them because if they're overcooked, then they'll end up with like a gray ring around the yolks. For cooking the fish, I've got 600 milliliters of milk in a pan and I'm going to bring that to a gentle simmer and then I'm going to add the fish. I've got 400 grams of prepared fish. This was actually sold as a fish pie mix. So it's a mixture of salmon, smoked haddock and a white fish fillet. Um, I think this one is actually a cod that they put in it. Normally if I'm buying fish, I do like smoked haddock in it because it gives it a really good flavour. I prefer to buy the undyed one, so it's less yellow than this one. Um, but at least when it's yellow, you can tell what the fish is. And I'm also going to add 100 grams of raw king prawns to it. So I'm just waiting for the milk to come up to the boil. And I'm going to turn the eggs down very slightly as they're simmering. Now I went through the fish um, when I took it out of the packet to make sure I couldn't see any bones in it. So when the milk is nearly boiling, I'm going to add the fish to it. And the prawns. So you see at this stage, the prawns are really quite grey as I tip them in and as they cook, they'll turn pink. So I'm going to let that come up almost to the boil again and then I'm going to turn the heat down and cook it for just two minutes and then I'm going to turn the heat off completely and I'm going to let the fish continue to cook in the heat that's left in the milk. With fish, it's very delicate and it's all too easy to overcook it. So I don't want to cook it too much. Now I can see it's starting to come up to the boil. I'm going to turn the heat right down. See the prawns there on one side where it's been in the milk has already turned pink. The other side is still grey. So that's had just a couple of minutes now. So I'm going to turn off the heat and set a timer for five minutes just to let the fish finish cooking. So it's been standing in the hot um, milk now for five minutes and I can see the prawns are totally pink and the salmon looks cooked as well. So I'm going to strain this. To, through a colander and then the fish needs to go into the uh, bottom of an oven proof dish. So tip that out and then spread it with a spoon. So then I can use this milk now to make the sauce. So I've drained the potatoes really well and I'm going to add 25 grams of butter to it and then some salt and some white pepper. Usually I sort of love black pepper and everything but in fish pie I think white pepper goes better. And then I'm going to mash this to get it as smooth as possible. So when the potato is nice and smooth, 
you can clean off the potato masher and then that's all ready to go onto the top of the pie. So that's looking really nice and smooth. So I'm going to leave that to one side. To make the sauce, it's made by a roux method. So I need to melt the butter in the pan. melted. I'm just going to lift it up because it's bubbling away. I don't want it to bubble and um, colour it too much. So just stirring until the last of the butter has melted. Put the pan back on the hob. So it's 50 grams of butter and 50 grams of plain flour. So I'm going to beat that well so it comes together and forms the paste. about a minute to cook the starch grains and then I'm going to gradually add the milk. So between each addition of milk I'm going to beat it really well to make sure it's smooth. It should cook fairly quickly because the milk is still a little bit hot from having been heated to cook the fish. making sure it boils between each addition of milk and is really smooth before you then add some more. If it does go lumpy you can use a whisk on it and if you whisk it really hard you should get the lumps out or you can use a stick blender to whiz it and that will take out any lumps. But if you've added the milk gradually and made sure it's smooth between each addition of milk then it shouldn't have gone lumpy. So that's all the milk added, I'm just stirring it now until it comes up to a simmer and then I'll simmer it for one or two minutes just so it's nicely thickened and then it will be all ready to use. I've now got a nice smooth sauce so what I'm going to add to it to make it have an extra fishy flavour is a fish stock cube. So this is an optional thing to add. I tend to use a fish stock cube and then I don't add any salt to my sauce. I use this in place of the, um, adding salt. So stir that until it's all dissolved and I'm going to turn off the heat and add some dill. So I've got some nice fresh dill and to finally chop it I'm going to use scissors and I'm going to snip it directly into the saucepan. It's also good with parsley if you don't like dill. Dill has got a slightly aniseedy flavour to it. I love it, but I know a lot of people don't like it. So you can use, as I say, parsley or even a little bit of tarragon goes well with fish. 
So that's my sauce all ready to put onto the pie. Something I do want to do um, with my sauce before I use it is actually add a little bit of pepper to it. So I'm going to stir that in. And then just to check the flavour of it, I'm going to use a clean teaspoon to see how the seasoning is. So that tastes good to me. I'm not adding any salt because I've used a fish stock cube and that gives the saltiness. And also I find smoked haddock is a little bit salty sometimes. So um, that's why I don't add any extra to it. I've got the hard boiled eggs, which I'm going to cut into quarters. So you see these are lovely yellow color. They don't have um, a dark ring around them. So they were simmered for eight minutes and then I tipped all the water out and um, let them cool in a pan of cold water. So I'm adding these to the pie. Then I'm going to tip the sauce over the top. If you think it's too much sauce, you don't have to add it all. You can save it and you could use it to go with pasta. You could add a bit of extra fish to it and have it with pasta. But I like quite a lot of sauce in mine. And with a spoon and a fork. So I'm going to just take some of the thing and then I'm just going to stir it with a spoon very gently, just so some of the sauce goes underneath the fish, so it's not all dry at the bottom. And then the final thing to do is to top it with the mash. So I'm going to put spoonfuls of mash onto the top. If you wanted to, you could pipe this on to make it look more fancy. But most of the time when I'm doing it, I just spoon it onto the top. If you wanted a very fancy way of serving it, you could actually pipe it around the potato, around the edge of one of these scallop shells, and then put some fish food mixture in the middle of it and bake it. That's quite a sort of old fashioned way of serving it. They're quite small, so it's more like an appetizer, a starter size. You could do them that way. And I'm using the fork to spread this so that it textures it. If you wanted to, you could put a few knobs of butter on the top of this before you put it in the oven to help make sure it goes a nice golden crispy colour. Just randomly putting some fork marks because the like little bits add crunchiness to it rather than having the top of it totally smooth. So that needs to go in the oven now. Actually, what I'm going to do is put it onto a baking tray, just in case any of this sauce mixture bubbles out. So I'll put it on the tray and I'll put it in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. So I've got the oven quite hot, it's on 200 degrees. And I'll put the timer on for 20 minutes. But I'll keep an eye on it just to make sure it doesn't burn. So it's a good job that I put this pie onto a baking tray because it has bubbled out a little bit. But that's it, the top is looking golden and um, that'll be slightly crunchy. 
and it's all ready to serve. And for serving, I would serve it with normally with garden peas, but it's also nice with any green veg such as asparagus or green beans, or even glazed carrots goes really well with it. Or for a lighter meal, you could serve it with some salad. But I'm not going to waste any time, I'm going to dish some of that up.